Good evening, students. Tonight's homework will be on the seven principles of the Constitution. I'm essentially focusing on how the Constitution works. Please define each one of the principles in your vocabulary section of your composition book. You will be asked to define these in class as well. Thank you very much and enjoy the lecture. The first one of the principles we'll discuss is popular sovereignty. Um, by definition, it means a government in which the people rule based on the idea of classical liberalism, meaning that they get to participate by voting. People can run for office, they can campaign, campaign as individuals, or protest decisions made by others. They get to essentially control the way that the government runs through their voting. This is defined in the preamble of the Constitution, essentially saying, we the people of the United States, also gives a list of what the Constitution is supposed to do. For instance, provide uh, justice, um, safety and tranquility, um, and common defense, and the general welfare of the people of this country. Um, popular sovereignty essentially has to do with the ability to vote for elected officials to represent us. Where popular sovereignty is the act of voting for elected officials, republicanism is the idea that we vote for people to run the government for us. We pick people who have similar opinions and views to ourselves and who we feel will best represent us. You can't um, have the whole population voting on everything. It would get too sloppy. So we hire people to represent us at both the state and the federal level. At the state level, here in the West Valley, our representative is named Matt DeBabna. In Congress, our rep representative is named Brad Sherman. We have two senators, and their names are Barbara Boxer and Dianne Feinstein. Obviously, we have also voted for President Obama, who runs the entire country as a representative of all people in the United States. Now, the United States government is based on the idea of federalism. Federalism is a system of government that is divided um, between the state and national government. In our system, the national government does have ultimate authority, um, but the state has say on what goes on a local level. Um, power for the national government is what we call Delegated powers, power of the state government, is called reserve powers, essentially meaning that if a decision is not made on the federal level, it will then fall to the states to rectify and make that decision. Um, in this way, they share equal power amongst the two, um, and we feel more represented than otherwise. The next principle of the Constitution is called the separation of powers. Essentially what this means is in order to um, have a balance of power throughout the government, power will be divided amongst three branches of government, the legislative, the executive, and the judicial. This way, one person or one group of people cannot control everything and become too powerful as with a total monarch. Um, power is balanced out amongst many different people. The judicial branch has nine members. Um, the executive or the legislative branch has 535 members divided amongst two houses. This way, no one group can become too powerful and dominate the government. The next one that we'll talk about is the checks and balances. This is essentially the balance of power um, working. Essentially what happens is each branch of government um, checks the other one and so they essentially balance the power out. Um, there's three branches of government and they all have a control or check on the other two branches. Um, this balance between the three ensures that no branch can get out of control and too powerful. An example is that if the federal um, judges are nominated by the president um, but they have to be approved by Congress that if the executive branch signs a law into practice but it is unconstitutional the judicial branch will essentially squash it um, this way everything has to work in balance now in a monarchy we have people like the king and nobles who are 
more powerful than everybody else. However, in our government, um, all politicians are held to the same laws that everybody else is. And this is the idea called limited government, meaning that everybody has to follow the same laws, even members of the government. Or, yeah, of the government. If a representative kills somebody or they commit a crime, um, they're going to face a jury trial just like anybody else in um, the United States. They have no special um, powers protecting them, um, say, as a king would have in England. The last principle, and probably the most important, is the idea of individual rights. Um, by definition, it's a personal liberties and freedoms um, that everybody is born with and cannot be taken away without due process of the law. The Bill of Rights is the first ten amendments to the Constitution, um, and these create these laws or these create these rights um, that are given to us by the government. Um, now, the first example is the First Amendment, which calls for religious freedom and tolerance, um, and also freedom of speech and press, meaning that essentially we could say or do anything um, as long as we are not threatening others. There are limits to our freedom of speech. However, essentially, they only go to bodily threats towards other people. Now, the seven principles of uh, the Constitution outline the purpose of the Constitution, what it is expected to do in our lives. So what I would like you to do is to tell me, the purpose of the Constitution is to limit the power and the scope of the fe federal government, but at the same time make sure it does its job. How do the seven principles of the Constitution allow for this to happen? Please cite specific examples from the principles um, that you can share in class on Monday. All right, thank you very much, um, and I look forward to hearing from you, and have a good weekend.